Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm happy to see that almost everyone is taking a seat. Thank you so much for coming to our first Women in Localization event for the Silicon Valley chapter uh, of 2020. We're really excited to, yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're really excited to start the year with um, an event about uh, New Year resolutions, New Year resolutions, goals, and uh, peer coaching. I know we started a little bit late, so thank you so much for your patience. And here is a little bit of the uh, agenda and the things that we're going to uh, do today. Uh, I'm going to start with a few introductions about the um, uh, Women in Localization organization as well as uh, our team. Uh, and then uh, we have a very special guest tonight, uh, Teresa Marshall. Uh, she's going to guide us through uh, learning a little bit more about a very effective uh, coaching um, framework that can help um, coach each other and really learn a little bit more how to, how to do that effectively. Uh, and then we're going to do a practice session. Uh, we really want to make sure that we create a strong community where people have the ability and the opportunity to create strong relationships. Uh, and we think that an activity where you can actually practice some of the things that we're talking about is going to be a great way for um, building relationships, getting to know each other a little bit more, and really feeling part of this community that is women in localization. So without further ado, I want to start by thanking our amazing sponsors. Thank you so much, Michelle and Survey Monkey, for having us here. This venue is amazing. Uh, I love this space. I think this is absolutely great. We're very grateful um, for this venue. And thank you so much to High Tech Passport, Magdalena, and her team. Uh, they've been absolutely great. They've been sponsoring the food. All of the amazing food that you see was either prepared by them or catered by them. It's phenomenal. So thank you so much for, um, for bringing that. And I also want to thank our volunteers. They're all from High Tech Passport. So uh, all of the greeters that helped us out. Um, Anne-Marie, Lelia, Melina, Nina, and Theodora. Thank you so much for helping us out. We are very grateful. Great, and now I would like to introduce a little bit the um, Silicon Valley chapter leadership team. So my name is Chiara, uh, I'm a localization manager at WhatsApp, and I'm the chapter manager of the Silicon Valley chapter. Uh, I started about a year ago as the Silicon Valley chapter, and it's been an amazing journey for me. I'm really grateful and excited to uh, be able to volunteer for this organization. And of course, I have an amazing team helping me out. Um, Laura, if you can, yeah, say hi. Uh, she's our associate manager for social media. So she helps us with all the communication and our social media channels. And then we have Magdalena from High Tech Passport. I think she's still downstairs <laughs> helping us. Uh, and working super hard. Uh, she's our uh, mentorship um, associate manager, so she helps make sure that everyone who wants to sign up um, can do that and can participate to our events. And then we have Samantha. I think I see her over there. She's our associate manager for events organization, so she's our logistics uh, master, super organized. She helps us make these events possible. And then Winnie, I think a lot of you know her. Yeah, and she, of course, is our uh, associate manager uh, focusing on mentoring, coaching, and really building a good relationship between industry um, and academia. Also, um, plug for um, Laura. She helped us launch our first <laughs> Facebook page, so uh, please check it out. Um, you can see the link here on the slides. Um, Facebook.com, Women in Localization Silicon Valley. We really want to use this as a channel to communicate more with our members, uh, share pictures, and hear, and hear from you. Hear what you want to know more about, what you like and what you don't like, so that we can always uh, have events that uh, are tailored for you. And now a little bit more about women in localization. 
The mission of Women in Localization is to foster a global community for the advancement of women and the localization industry in general. If you want to know more about our organization, I really encourage you to visit our uh, womeninlocalization.com website. You're going to see a lot of information about our history and how Women in Localization uh, was started. Uh, we are now a nonprofit. This was a long journey and we are very proud of uh, getting to this point. Um, our mission is to foster a global community that is for women and for everyone in the localization industry. Um, the organization was founded uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area in uh, 2008 um, and we now have thousands of members across the globe, multiple chapters that keep on growing thanks to the work of uh, our committees and Michelle helps, for example, uh, with all of the new chapters that are coming on board across the world um, to support all of our members uh, locally as well. And I also wanted to share an important update about uh, membership. So some of you have been members for a long time, uh, might have joined through meetup.com or LinkedIn or some other kind of social media channel. We're trying to streamline this process a little bit more. So um, I really encourage everyone to sign up uh, through our official membership channel. It's womeninlocalization.com slash sign up final slash. Um, you are going to just provide your name, last name, and email address, and that's going to help uh, us keep our database up to date and make sure that you can receive all of the updates about um, our events as well as all of the uh, events invites and also some previews and uh, interesting information for you. And uh, since today we're going to be uh, talking about coaching and learning a lot about how to um, coach each other and be coached, uh, I also wanted to encourage you to participate to our uh, mentor uh, matchmaking program. This is a really, really valuable program that um, a lot of volunteers in Women in Localization uh, work on. And it has the purpose to pair established uh, localization professionals within the industry um, with those people who maybe are seeking guidance or want to improve on a specific skill or are trying to maybe learn a little bit more about the industry and find the right match uh, for each so that everyone can um, evolve in their career. And to participate, it's really simple, either as a mentor or as a mentee. Uh, you just have to go on our website. You can click on resources, and then you'll see um, uh, a little uh, menu around our mentor uh, matchmaking program. And uh, you will need to fill in a brief survey, powered by SurveyMonkey, of course. <laughs> Uh, and that is going to help us assess what are your needs, what are you looking for, and make sure that we are matching someone that uh, fits your needs, basically. So please, after this event, I strongly recommend you to sign up either as a mentor or as a mentee. Uh, I think this is a really great program and it, helped, it has helped a lot of people in the industry grow, so I strongly recommend it. Okay. I think now it's the time to introduce our uh, guest speaker. Uh, so our guest speaker is uh, Teresa Marshall. Some of you might already know her. Uh, she's the VP of Globalization and Localization at Salesforce. Um, she drives globalization and uh, localization related efforts uh, at Salesforce, including uh, internationalization, um, management um, of programs and features development to uh, really enable Salesforce to, to go global. Um, I'm going to need to read all of this because she's an extremely accomplished <laughs> professional in the industry and I want to make sure that I do it justice. So. Um, yeah, in 2009, uh, she joined Salesforce uh, as a senior localization manager, uh, and she led all of the product localization efforts through a period of very intensive growth. Uh, and since 2015, she has led both globalization and localization for Salesforce, and she actually started her career as a German linguist. So... I think this is, for me, it's really impressive and really inspiring to see that 
someone can start as a linguist and get to become a VP of globalization of one of the most important companies in the world. Um, so yeah, I find this super um, inspiring. And uh, throughout her career that spans 15 years, she has held programs and um, program and operational management positions at a variety uh, of companies, including leading the localization team at Google. Uh, from 2010 to 2014, she was an adjunct member of the uh, Monterey Institute, the Middlebury Institute in Monterey. Probably uh, some of you have had her as a professor or have known her um, through her uh, contributions to uh, the Middlebury Institute, um, where she taught in the Graduate School of Translation, Interpretation, uh, and Language Education. And then from 2014 to 2016, she was also on the board of Women in Localization. She's been um, really a great contributor to the growth and the foundations of our organization. So we're really excited to have her here today. And she's also been the organizer and the co-host of some very interesting initiatives uh, that are called the Localization Unconferences. If you don't know about them, I strongly recommend that you uh, look into them and search a little bit more. Uh, those are, again, really um, interesting initiatives that really help create community and really help people learn more about the industry and, and grow in their career by learning uh, from others. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to our guest speaker. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to bring this way down. Um, I'm going to see whether I can actually step over here so you can see me and I'm not blocked by this. Um, I think anything else I do now after that introduction is just going to go downhill from there. So just remember what Chiara said and we're good. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for having me and for inviting me. Um, it's been a little bit since I've actually really actively contributed because it's been a really, really busy time. Um, and so it's great to be back. Uh, it's actually really interesting. I'm gonna, this is, this is kind of weird seeing myself, so I'm gonna try to change this. There we go. So uh, when I was on the board, uh, Loy and I were sort of tasked with coming up what mentoring and coaching should look like. And, and what you see from those first initial thoughts that we had is, is both an event like this but also the matchmaking program that Kiara just introduced. So I encourage you to look at that as well. I think there's plenty of different opportunities to take advantage of that, and that gives you the opportunity in turn to find what works for you. I think traditionally, um, a lot of mentors or mentee relationship, when we think about them, we have this sort of 75-year-old dude and this younger person uh, sort of that kind of image in your head. And that's not the only way. It's these very sort of established relationships, that kind of mentoring definitely exists. And I think almost everybody who's, you know, in a leadership position has somebody like that. But it takes years to find the right person and years to sort of develop that and nurture that and to f really be able to keep that going. And so, we didn't want to sit here and say, well, you just have to put five, in years in that five years in and then you're going to find that person and then you're set for life. So we wanted to have some tools as well for everybody that they could employ. And this is how we ended up with this model. The model is actually quite simple. Um, and it can, you don't have to be somebody who's exceptionally experienced in the industry. So you don't, ha you have, don't have to be like old like me and around for 20 years or something like that. You can have started out yesterday and you bring something, and this, this model allows you to bring sort of your, your listening um, and your speaking skills to help the other person. So it's very um, beneficial in, in that conversation. So I can't actually read that without glasses. This is how old I am. So um, it's actually a model that has been used in, in many different industries, not just for this type of like high tech or localization. Um, it started out as a coaching method in sports and athletes. Um, so it can be really applicable. I've, I've actually done this with my kids when they're stuck. Um, I didn't sit them down and tell them what I, you know, here's what you're doing, but sort of the same kind of uh, skills that we're hoping to develop. So 
And like I said, it helps both sides to reflect. And I have to say, whenever I really engage in that, I'm always surprised how much I learn from that interaction as well, even though I'm theoretically the person mentoring. So with that, I'm going to move on and show you a little bit more about this. I think this is a really nice sort of diagram in terms of how it exp uh, explains the thing. But you really start out with one topic. Um, and this is super important because if you say, hey, Teresa, I want to grow my career, we can sit here for ages. But we have to say, OK, how do we boil this down? Um, how do we break it down? Because it's overwhelming if you have a gigantic topic. How do, I, how do I influence my CEO? I don't know. You have to start in steps. And this is really a model that helps you break that down and then focus on this one step and see as you employ it that you are successful with it. So you really come up with a topic. Um, you say, this is what I want to solve. And the coach really, or the mentor, really helps you to define that with questions. You don't have to be the expert on that topic. I don't know how to teach a dog how to sit, but I can probably figure out to help you understand what you already know about that. And then you take it the next step. Once you really have sort of that, that, that topic defined, you say, this is what I want out of it. I want to grow my career. That's a big topic. That's years of growth right there, years of efforts right there. But you can take smaller steps. So let's see what that goal should be for this quarter, for this half year, for this year, and, and really sort of boil it down so we can then build it up individually. And then it really focuses on what do you do now. So that's the R. So I sort of skipped the T's and the G, but you got it, I think. I see a lot of nodding. So um, really understanding what, where you are, what your reality looks like. Oh, I always want to work out more, but I never get it done. Well, what does that look like? Why don't you get it done? What have you tried? That's the R part in this kind of thing. And then really saying, OK, now we understand your reality. What are the options? And not coming up with 25 different options. Or maybe with 25 different options, if you have that time. But then really saying, which one is one that I can focus on? And really saying, what is that? And you may, have, you may come up with five. Um, but you need to, to be realistic. You need to boil it down a little bit further than that. Um, that's typically, in my experience, where most of the conversations are. Because, I mean, we're not coming up with a topic that we've never talked about. You probably have mulled this over in your head a number of times. And so this part of the options is where, as a mentor, you ask the most questions. And as a mentee, you're trying to just blabber whatever comes into your brain. It's like, well, I could do this. I could fly to the moon. I could, I don't know, buy a whatever it is, right? You get it. And then as you get to the end of it, really saying, boiling it down and say, hey, this is what I can do. So you have something actionable um, to, to really go in and say, here's this one thing I'm going to try. And not, again, not this plethora of things, because that's overwhelming. And this is the nice thing about the model. You can have this conversation in five minutes. You can have this in com conversation over the course of lunch. Um, or 10 minutes or 15 and anything in between, or you can keep it going, right? You could have this over the course of a number of sessions with uh, your you know, partner or whatever. So that's really it. It's really kind of very easy to follow because as the mentor, you have to ask questions. Um, prompt the person to think. It's not, your, it's not your position to solve it. If Michelle comes to me and said, I want to do X, and I say, oh, you just do X, Y, and Z, then you get an X, um, that's not going to help her. Because maybe, maybe it doesn't apply in her situation, in her environment, in her, with her, I don't know, style of working or anything like that. So it's much more interesting to say, well, what have you tried? What is, what is your goal going through this? And the tricky bit as a mentor is to take yourself out of it. You're there to ask questions and to parrot what you hear or to rephrase what you hear. Don't provide the solution. Because the powerful part about this is that the mentee really gets to think through it and gets to help define it themselves and think about it. And typically what happens is that when you have the option, when you see what you think you should do next, you're more likely to do it than when somebody else tells you that. Okay. 
So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you this, although I think Kiara was going to tell you this again. Um, so I'm not going to tell you. She's going to tell you. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to sort of have a quick kind of role model, role play around this. And I um, was going to ask for a volunteer, but then I picked one. So Pia, would you join me? <laughs> can't hear you. Can we, is it okay? Yeah, you, you come up with me. You're special today. Okay. Do you mind if we use this? Can I turn them both on? This one. Hello? Yes. Hello? So to be fair to Pia, uh, she didn't know about this until like, what, 20 minutes ago? So give her a hand for being my victim. Thank you. Panic, panic. I'm going to go back to this so I can cheat. Um, but also so you can sort of follow, right? And like I said, I mean, there's not 100% the right way of doing this. The important part is to sort of listen as a mentee, a, a mentor, really listen and help, sort of help rephrase some of that in order to see uh, where, where Pia can find the solution. So, what's your topic? Right. You actually, sorry, do you want to introduce yourself real quick since I so elegantly pulled you okay. out of the crowd? Uh, hello everyone, my name is Pia. I'm um, the manager, I head the product localization team at Uber. I've been at Uber for about a year and a half. And uh, before that, I was with RWS Moravia, or Moravia, it wasn't RWS. It just became RWS for a long time. And then before that, I was at E2F Translations, which is a single language vendor, English to French. That was in Santa Clara. Thank you. So what's your topic? So my, my question actually is, I want to hark back a, a year and a half, and I would really like to, uh, my goal, I'm just, this is a scenario, right? Uh, my goal is to move to the client side and I, what, what do I, what do I do? <laughs> How can I do that? What, are, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> That's a tiny topic, really tiny topic. Um, okay, so your, so your longer term goal is to move from the vendor side to the client side. Yes. Um, what have you looked at as you, like, what in particular are you looking at at the client side? Well, it's really interesting when I, when I browse through LinkedIn and, and uh, the Google Jobs and all sorts of things, you have project management, you have program management. Um, I am a program manager, but I, have, but I do project management. And so there's sort of a leveling situation where... Um, where can I apply? What do I apply? What do I need to do? What do I need to say for them to, to see that I would be competent in either of those? So to, to find that, what have you looked at? What have I looked at? Yeah. Like in terms so of if job? you if you wanted to, so you, you see that there's a leveling issue, that there's program management jobs, there's project management jobs. Um, what have you done to learn a little bit more about them? Uh, the interesting piece is that, you know, o o overall, um, both jobs require, you know, project management. Um, and I have project management experience. Um, they, they talk about, obviously, you know, you need to have uh, several years experience. Um, some of the key words in those jobs are you know, stakeholder engagement or management. Um, on the vendor side, you manage a bunch of clients. Um, yes, you might work with other teams inside your organization, but would that map, would, they, would these hiring managers consider that a, a plausible map, mapping towards my experience? Right, so I'm gonna think that we're gonna break down the overall goal a little bit because that's a really lofty high-level goal and we're oh. gonna sit here 
for hours and lose <laughs> our, you know, illustrious audience. Lunch. So, um, <laughs> no, hopefully not lunch. <laughs> So, so let's let's see. Like one of the first steps, right? Obviously, when you make a big move, there's going to be a number of steps. So, how about we say? It sounds like you have some understanding of the industry. You have some understanding of the difference in jobs. Um, how could you go about sort of nailing that down so you can find potentially that as a pathway into the next step? What's the next step? So, from from looking at the differences in the jobs and right. Applying, I guess. Um, well, what, I, mean, I want to understand um, what would make me successful there. Right. So before before we go all the way to applying, what are some of the options that you could look at to be ready to apply? Uh, possibly see if I'm connected to someone on on a client side to see what their day is like day to day. Um, understanding what kinds of challenges they go through. Uh, who they interact with the most, um, and and possibly taking those learnings and seeing what kinds of things I'm doing in my job currently. Um, and if I if I'm not doing something that I should be doing, you know, possibly figure out a way to learn it. <laughs> right. So so you just basically outline some options. You say I can connect with people who have that job and learn from them. You could sort of. Like you said earlier, um, I think you used the word mapping, right? Mm. You could map what you currently do to what you've learned through those connections and then define what maybe is missing, like what you're doing, what you're not doing, stuff like that. So that's that's three options. We could explore every single option and okay. come up probably with two or three more. Um, but for the sake of this role play, yeah. we're going to um, see, well, what are, what are ways to connect? We're going to pick the first one. I'm going to pick the first one for you. That's not how it works. Typically, the mentee <laughs> would pick that, so be kind. Um, but for example, exploring, exploring options, how to, how to connect with people, um, who, what, what are options there? Well, we, this forum obviously is a, is a tremendous resource. You see the elegant plug for locos <laughs> women in localization here? I'm just checking that you're still with us. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. And, and actually, it's interesting because when I joined D2F, I didn't know anything about localization, and I came to the Women in Localization, and that's how I learned about the industry. And so, obviously, here is a great forum. I, I guess I could also sort of connect with them via LinkedIn. Um, potentially, if I'm looking at a particular job at an employer that I'm, I would want to work with, see if I know someone who's working there already or someone who knows someone who's working there already and, um, you know, not be shy about reaching out and putting a message in LinkedIn. I think it would work. I think that would work. So if this was for real, I would try to get her to look outside of that, uh -huh. of what you know, right? So maybe looking at uh, product management. There's product management user groups just there's, just like there's women in localization, right? So that you go to the fringes of that. Again, since this is a role play, I'm going to ask you which one of the options that you just sort of highlighted, what's your next step? What are you going to do or what will you do in order to get to your goal? What am I going to do to get to my goal? So I, I haven't, I've been exploring. Um, and I believe in Feng Shui. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I truly believe in the energy of the universe. And uh, when, when I got that paper, it was really funny because I've actually printed out a picture of where I want to go and stuck it on my career corner. Yay! Yes, very nice. So to, to tie it back to the model again, I'm going to um, just sort of highlight that there should be one action out of this conversation. And I know we're speeding through this because it's a big topic, but... Really, there should be one or two steps where you say, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to... I'm going to reach out via LinkedIn to someone who works at the company I'm eyeing, eyeballing. Exactly. Thank you so much for letting me put you on the spot. For your help, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's always fun uh, to be put on the spot. So I'm going to hand it back. Thank you for... Uh,
indulging us. Um, I really think this is a, a great model, and it works. I've actually had my daughter do this as a role, a role play with me uh, while she was making some snacks this afternoon, and she came up with a scenario that she wanted to, she either could go to her friend's baby shower, she's 17, I hope she doesn't have a friend that is pregnant at 17, no, could have, um, or go to a business meeting that was really important. We got down to a plan that seemed realistic, uh, given that a 17-year-old really does not know what business is like. <laughs> but it's, it's really valuable. It's, you always learn something regardless of which side of this sort of conversation you're on, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you so much, Pia. I think this was uh, really inspiring for all of us, and it's really going to give us a sense of how we can apply this in our um, practice session. Okay, so here are the instructions for all of you who were dying to know what are those weird symbols on my paper. So this is our way to mix and match people in a random way. Um, we want you to create groups of three um, and you'll see uh, an icon on the top of your handout that represents your group. Um, all around the stage, we have multiple tables with that symbol, so you can go around and find your symbol, and that's going to be your group. You'll also see that you have different colors, and those are the ones that are going to help you understand who's going to start. So for the first round of the practice session, um, whoever has a red color, it's going to be the observer, is going to take notes and just like provide feedback at the end of the session on um, how the mentor has helped the mentee. Um, if you have a blue icon, you're going to be the mentee. And then if you have the purple icon, you're going to be the coach or mentor. We are going to have um, three uh, sessions, 15 minutes each. We're going to let you know um, when the time is almost up so you can wrap up the conversation um, and maybe start doing the debrief um, with, the, with the observer. Uh, and take these 15 minutes to really do a similar exercise to the one that you've seen uh, Teresa and Pia demo today. Um, and also just have fun. So. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we have uh, a lot of uh, women in localization volunteers who can help you uh, find your table if you have uh, any trouble, but it's all of the tables that you see all around there and all of the tables here, they have a big uh, sign on top of it. Awesome. And you will also see there's a handout with some uh, questions that you can use if this is your first time. Uh, I recommend that you take a look at the questions. We will also keep them up here so you can use them as inspiration. Okay, everyone, I think our 15 minutes are up. So wrap up your last, um, your last thoughts. And then I think we can all regroup here and take a big group picture all together.
Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for coming.